Hey folks, Paul Burkita here from Evolve Lab, and today I'm going to show you how to add and correctly size insulation to Revit pipe systems. In last week's video, we applied insulation to Revit duct systems by taking user input, insulation thickness, insulation type, and the duct system type. This week we'll be doing something very similar to Revit pipe systems, except this time we will let the insulation thickness be controlled by the pipe diameter. This could be really useful if once again, you are an MEP detailer and you need to add insulation to large systems or many systems at once. If you're a BIM coordinator and same deal, you want to add uh, insulation to many systems at once to get them in your coordination model. Or if you're a trade, trade detailer or fabricator and want to use or insulate your systems and use them for fabrication later on down the line. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, let me run through this Dynamo script real quick. Let's show you guys what is going on. We have our inputs here. Pipes that are smaller than this size receive insulation this thick of this type of insulation. If a pipe is larger than this size, it receives insulation this thick in inches of this type of insulation selected by index position. We select our pipe system type again by index position and that's all the input we need to let this script run and so here's how it's doing that so first off it's collecting all the pipe systems in the model uh, and getting the name of them that allows us to select the one that we want using that pipe system that, or that system name rather we just go ahead and select the actual the system name that we're using and now we compare that to all pipe elements that we have collected. So how do we do that? Well, we type in the name of the pipes category, get the actual category element, not just the string name, get all elements of that category. So now we have all pipes in the model in this node, of which there are only 49. We get the system type for all of those pipes, and I get the name of that system type rather, and then compare it to our input system type name which is domestic cold water. We filter out any results that don't match. Then we get the size of all of our matching system type pipes. So we have a filtered collection of, of pipes in our system type. Now we get the size of them. And we use that size to determine is it larger than A or I'm sorry, is it smaller than A or larger than B? And that is what's going to determine the thickness of the insulation received. That's down here. Our insulation thickness, which we've input over here. These nodes are just carrying uh, that data through, so it's a little easier than going all the way back and forth. Based on the results of our, our test here, our, our pipe size threshold, we're going to apply that insulation thickness in the same exact manner to those pipes. So we filter for larger than or smaller than A, it gets this type of insulation. If it's larger than B, it's going to get this type or this size insulation. You can see that if you follow the spaghetti mess here, they each go to the, the different insulation sizes. Finally, now that we have our input system type, the insulation type, and the thickness, which has been converted to feet here, we can use those and the MEP over package node element add insulation to actually add insulation to our Revit elements. If you caught last week's video uh, where we added insulation to ductwork, use the same exact node. It works for both. Um, like I said, highly recommend getting the MEP over package for Revit, especially if you find yourself uh, dealing with any type of MEP system really in your workflow. Okay, so that's the general just the general gist of it. One thing to note here though is that for pipe fittings, the reason we broke out pipe fittings 
from pipe elements is because getting their size it just requires a different parameter value. So whereas for pipe elements we just had to, to call their diameter using the get parameter value by name. For pipe fittings their diameter value gets a little confusing. Let's see if I can select one here. Only that only because it, it includes both its in and out um, openings in that, that size. What we want is the nominal diameter, which totally makes sense. So to grab its nominal diameter. See if we have any here. Yes, we do. Excellent. And then we have to filter out blank results. Um, so where that happens is if you have, let's say, a T fitting that reduces, it's a, a T reducing. Its nominal diameter isn't going to be just one size then, now it's going to be two sizes. You're going to have a two inch inlet and a one and a half inch outlet, let's say. And that screws up the sizing here. So for this script, in this instance, we're going to filter out anywhere that returns a blank value for its size or in its nominal diameter um, parameter. This is, like I was just saying, this is this will happen and it will turn a blank size if it's like a, a fitting that has more than one um, opening size to it. So we're going to filter these out so we don't get any null values uh, from this, this part of the script and then using that filtered list of fitting elements and sizes, we're going to do the exact same process here that we did up here. Get the size, check it against size A less than or size B larger than, and then convert to feet, grab the insulation type, grab all the fitting elements that we're supposed to grab for that size, and apply the insulation. All right. So for this exercise, what we've done is extracted the code from this MEP over package node and just copy and pasted it into a Python node. We did that so that you don't have to go out and download the MEP over package. You can just run it straight from the script, which we will provide, uh, by the way. You just run it straight from the script and you don't have to worry about packages or anything. That being said, go out and download this guy's stuff because it's really great. Okay, we're ready to run our output. Let's unfreeze it. Let's take a look at our pipes. All right, so we're doing cold water, right? So let's just, uh, let's hypothesize here what we're going to receive when we run the script. Oh, this is good. We actually have an error. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, that's fine. We'll get to that in just a sec. Our three-quarter inch domestic cold water that's going to receive half inch insulation, right? Because it's it's less than one inch, so it's going to receive half inch insulation. However, our inch and a half domestic cold water, that's going to receive, because it's greater than an inch and a quarter, it's going to receive one inch insulation. Same with the two inch pipe here. So that's what we expect to see. Half inch insulation and inch, inch insulation. Let's just make sure our script is running okay. Uh, insulation failed. Oh, because we need to connect our fam types, our insulation fam types to this node. That's over here. Remember, quick note here, this family type name, this is just a string of the name of the, the actual element. We want the actual elements, so let's grab our pipe insulation type elements. And I mean Revit elements, not physical. Uh, elements of the model, and let's connect that to our insulation family types. So that now we can select our insulation type properly. So let's unfreeze our scripts. Pretty key to making it run correctly. Let's just throw down a quick save and split that again. Split this. Oops, don't split that. Yep, there we go. All right, so this is kind of nice because now we already have insulation added, and we can see with their script that it's not going to overwrite that insulation. Instead, it's just going to add new insulation. And that's exactly what we wanted to see. This insulation is one inch thick. 
Excellent. That's what we wanted. This insulation is half inch. That's what we wanted. And one inch. What we want. All right. Excellent. That looks like it's working great. If we go to our 3D view, notice that even the fittings got insulated. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning into this week's video, where we use Dynamo to add pipe insulation to pipe system type based on the pipe element size. If this script sparks your interest, or if you have other Revit MEP workflow enhancement ideas that you'd like to implement in your firm, give us a shout at evolvelab.io. Catch you next week.